Hello, my squishies. Hopefully, you guys are just joining us. I'll give everyone a couple of minutes just to catch up, make sure everybody can get live, and then we'll start. How are you all on this lovely Friday evening? The weather is glorious up here in Fort William. Somebody give me a hello in the comments so that I know you can hear me. A big hello. Uh, so I know you can hear me and that you can see me. Now the comments do take about 30 seconds to come through on this. So I can probably, hopefully you're shouting at me. Hey, we have people, I'm live. Oh, and I just lost everything. <laughs> there we go. So for those of you who haven't joined us before, welcome to the Caledonian Wool Company's Felt Along. Tonight, we're going to do the Old Man of Store. It's up in this corner here. But I'll give you a very brief introduction to needle felting before we start. And then we're going to crack on with felting our landscapes. Okay, so to start with, you should have got a full kit. So in your kit, you'll have a few different things. To start off with, there's a felting mat. So this is a foam mat that you always want to felt onto. It protects your surfaces and makes felting easier. You'll have some pre-felt. This is the fiber that we're going to felt onto. I've drawn on a basic layout. So it's kind of color by numbers what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna work onto that. We've also got all your different colored tops. So this is the commercial tops. It's just the fleece from the wool that's been washed and dyed. So to work with this, there's a few handy tips and tricks that we need to know. So when you're working with it, if you have your hands too close together, it's not going to pull apart. And if there's any twist in it, you're not going to be able to pull it apart either. Because when we're working, we're working with just tiny amounts of this. So to get a tiny amount off, you have your hands nice and far apart. Grab and just gently pull and you'll see how little that can, oh, there we go, how little can come out each time. So that is the tops. Also in your kit, you've got the fun bit. So we've got our needles and a needle holder. And I'll show you how to use this needle holder. You don't have to use it, but it can be really helpful. So in one end, you've got a little peg. We're gonna pull that out and you'll see there's a groove running along the top of it. You want to place one needle in the groove with the hook over the end. And if you're looking at it, that's the larger end and that's the smaller end. It's the smaller end with the hook over it that we're going to poke back into there. I'll do this one more time. So you start off with, you've got the little peg in there and the handle, so you pull it out, place the needle in the groove with the hook over the thinner end and then pop that back in. And when you're needle felting, you always want to be felting straight, either up and down or straight on an angle. You don't want to be bending because that's how you break your needles. There we go. So that was a very quick, quick and easy introduction to needle felting. Now tonight's one is a little bit more spicy than normal, but I think we're going to manage it. I have full confidence, especially in all the guys that subscribe to the monthly one. I know you can do it. And you know it's going to get messy for a while and then it's all going to come together so don't panic i'm here with you we can do this okay so let's start and as usual i like to start from the back and working forward so i'm going to start with the sky then we're going to work forward and do the the locks and the old man this is the old man the rock formation that is up there on sky We have to be careful this time uh, because it is slightly more piquant and not slightly more excitable than normal. 
that we don't want to go over and lose the rock formation. So when I'm doing the sky and things, I'm going to be working around it so that I can still see the outline. Just to make it... Just to make it easier. We should be good for half an hour and then you'll catch up later. It'll be fine. Perfect. Although I think this one might be a little over an hour today. Just because I want to make the rocks really nice and clear for you guys. Awesome. So let's start with sky. We've got the usual sky blue, but on this one, it's more of a misty, hazier day. So we're gonna put more white in than we have before. So I will still start with the blue. I've pulled out just a little bit and I'm gonna lay it down horizontally, but trying to, again, avoid the rock formation as much as possible so that we don't lose it. And then just start I'm going to take two at a time, stabbing in the blue, building up layers. I've got a little bit of blue and I'm going to layer it with a tiny bit of white. So I really love my layers. And we are working reasonably fast at the moment. We're not felting it in too strongly. So to begin with, we're just building up colours, building up shapes, and then we're going to work back in once all of it's coloured in and do the finer details. So don't stress about getting everything perfect just now. You're just laying down colours where you want them. And the wonderful thing about felting, that I know a lot of you know quite well, is if you put it in the wrong place, especially at this early stage, you can just pull it up and place it down where you want it to go. So this view is amazing. It's um, a rock formation just north of Portree on the Isle of Skye. You can actually drive up and almost see it from, I think you can see it from the road. And on the day like today, it's just beautiful if you walk up to the very top of it because you're looking down on a couple of locks and then the hills just fade into the horizon with the sea behind it. I'm going to put a little bit more blue because I am a little bit, there's a few wee, so I can see right the way through to the back which I want to avoid. I want to have a base of blue with white on top of it. This is a nice easy part just to get us started. So I'm going heavier on the white to give the impression of the sort of those hazy summer days that you get that are just absolutely wonderful. You just want to jump in a loch. Now I've put the horizon at an angle because whenever you are up there, it does look, it does go off at an angle. If you would prefer it to be straight, you can also do that as well. This is your design. Remember, I'm trying to leave out the outline of the, the man himself. And you can as well. So if I want to get a nice edge in there, I'm going to fold this in half and just pop it in there. So although at the moment I'm lying everything down straight across, the different way you lay it down can create lovely different effects. And now I've got a new mic at the moment, so hopefully the sound is okay. If the sound of the stabbing is too loud, somebody give me a shout and I will attempt to reposition the mic. But it was sounding okay when I was doing little stabbing tests earlier. Okay, so I'm happy with the current thickness of the sky. I will go back into that later. It's gently felted down, not too hard, but we're going to get right ahead to the meat and bones of this, the nice landscape. 
And before we do that, it's always a good idea, every so often, to pull your felt off of the mat because it will stick to the mat. So you just gently grab it and pull. And you'll see on the back, whoo, lose needles. You'll see on the back all your hard work where the little colors are just starting to show through. At this stage as well, you can reposition it and it's quite flexible if it's not quite, if it's shifted a little bit when you pulled it off. So don't worry about that. Awesome. So we've got the sky. We're now going to go down and do this horizon line. So starting with the... Thank you. Excellent. Starting with this lighter brown. We're going to start there and work our way forwards. So again, we're trying to avoid the rocks. And don't worry. So here, go a little bit over what you're going to do because we're going to fade it over the top, if that makes sense. So although this is going to be narrower in the end, I want it to come down a little bit further so that it you can see the depth of colour and you can see it nicely transitioning from one to the next. So here and a tiny bit up here, just the tiniest because I am leaving this more of a dark area, but there is just a little, a little splash behind. So that's, I would say that's sort of a, a camel brown, the lighter of the two browns in your pack. Just putting that there and then after that we're going for a tiny bit of the darker brown the more chocolatey brown and again so we've got our first line there so we're going to work this just below it but on top as well so it's you can see the camel brown poking through and now remember as well, I haven't mentioned this yet, but you want to go a little bit outside the line because the frame, it's not always a perfect line up. So you want to give yourself a wee bit of wiggle room. And if you want to change the layout a little bit, that's totally fine as well. So I'm just going to work a little bit over that line there. And the same again on this side. So hopefully everybody is keeping up. So we've gone camel brown to the lighter brown on the horizon line, avoiding the rock formation at the moment. We're going to do that bit last because you want that to stand up on top of everything. So next we're going to start with some greens and building them down, fading down. So we've got dark greens in this area fading up to light greens on the other side. So we're starting here and we're going to go round. So I'm going to grab the darkest of the green and I'm going to avoid this loch. This loch is going to come in afterwards. So the darkest of the green is going to go on top of this dark brown that we've put down. Because this dark brown is more of a base underneath colour that you're not necessarily going to going to see and you can go over your lock a little bit we'll just put the white of the lock on top there we go and remember just now we're still just putting colors down so there's no panic to get them perfect because we can shift them around but we want to get all the colors down see it as a whole and then start shifting everything around and deciding if you like it or not. Because tonight is, I mean it's not, I wouldn't say it's really that much harder, hopefully, maybe, than the other ones that we've done. It just looks scarier. 
we are still colouring in the different shapes with the colours. So There's no panic tonight. Tonight's going to be a relaxing stabbing session. I'm still working with the dark green, filling in basically all this side to about there. Hopefully we can still level. There we go. Avoiding the little lock-ins. And with this green, we don't have to put it down nice and parallel like we did for the sky. You can smoosh it around a little bit more and that'll give it a little bit of texture and some interesting shadows. We are going to go over it in with a couple of other colours as well. But we're just going to get it in, get it in there at the moment. So my lock is slightly disappearing, but that's okay. Again, we're not going much further than this. Kind of at an angle. Just to, because we're going to blend it up. So you can let little bits go up, that's no problem. That adds texture and depth but you don't want to put too much. You can see how I'm just letting it spill over and not really minding. That will that will add... If I say texture and depth one more time. <laughs> texture and depth to it. Interest to it. There we go. So that is a little area of dark green. So again, just now I'm not being too particular about felting it down well. That's for later on. And we can add more colour in if you've missed bits later on. Don't panic. So I'm going to move on to a slightly lighter green now. So there should be three greens in your pack. We've gone the darkest. We're going to blend the middle one now. That's going to join between the dark one and the light one at the top. We don't need much of this because we do want it to stand out quite prominently but it does just blend that edge again so I'm being quite messy with it and not laying it down straight. I'm even going to put a little bit of this along that join as well. So along where we had the dark brown and the light brown. I'm going to pop in a little bit of that on top of it as well. And in the other side there too. So this is still the mid brown that we're working with. Just giving it some depth, putting it in random little places. Not worrying too much because it is quite similar to the darker one, but it's just that little bit lighter. And once it's felted in a little bit, you can blur the edges by pulling slightly pulling it out and then felting it down again. I really love doing that. So we've got darkest, lightest, nope, darkest, middlest, <laughs> middlest, and then we're going to put in the light before it fades up to the rock. So again, this time I am going to lay it Am I? No, I'm not. I'm just going to lay it down however I like. Blending that edge. We're going to go over after the brown is on to lay it down in a specific angle. But just now, just going down any way you please. So this is the lightest of the green. Just filling up that side. green, lighter screen.
And you can take it down a little bit. Or if it's too much, just pull it off. There you go. So before we do the rocks, we're going to pop the lock-ins in and do a little bit of contouring. So just now, it, don't worry, like you can see how rough this is looking, it will all come together. Do not panic. She says slightly panicking. Um, so for the lock-ins, we're going to take, again, it's just the white and the blue this time. I'm going to lay down a layer of white, I think. And they're kind of just blobs. They can be any shape that you like. So a nice base of white. thin, tiny, tiny amount of blue. So again, tiny, tiny amount starting off blue, which is reflecting the wonderful misty sky that we've got. So I've got my little blow. I might put a little bit more bit more blue in there but that's a nice thing about starting off really light and getting darker is that you have that option to add more in I'm gonna just pull this up a wee bit because well you'll see if you're felting in one area for a while it starts to compress in so we want to kind of avoid that I'm not quite happy with the white line around the edge of my lock in there, so I'm going to put more blue so it goes, the blue goes right up the edge. I'm also going to take, so this is kind of kidney bean shaped just now. I think I want to make it slightly pointier at this side. And you can just work on top of the green, that is no problem at all. There we go. I'm going to put some more browns in this area, I think. I'll get back to that in a minute. But now I want to get my second little lock in. And again, this time, I'm just scrumfling the technical term, scrumfling up the white. To make another blob shape because that is the shape that they are <laughs> cannot avoid it and again a little bit of blue scrumpled up on top not too much that it covers up all your white but oof just enough Again, don't worry about them being absolutely perfect just now. We are still just laying down the colours and we're going to be putting in a lot more shading in this area. So don't panic. But now we're going to, let's get on with these rocks. These are going to be the bit we're going to spend the most time on. So let's get on with it. So the rocks, we're thinking about where the light hits them. So in my head, the light is coming down this way. So this side of all your, so it's three rock formations. So this side of them all is going to be the lighter side with the shadow on the back. Okay. So we're going to start with the lightest brown working 
on the three sides. So I'm going to go up a little bit into my sky here and that's totally fine because this front one is sort of more pointier one. It's also slightly behind the hill that goes up so you can pop that in so, you don't, so don't worry about fading it into the grass just now. So we've got and again we're still sketching just now so we've got the first side of rock one leaving an edge and we're going to do the first side of rock two so rock two is slightly lower it's the lower of the three ones and this one we are going to fade it down into the grass to do that just kind of let it go down a little bit. Don't worry too much though, because we're going to work on that later on. So I've got one side and left a gap, one side with a gap, and then we're going to go for this back one. So rock number three. And again, so this one is higher than the middle one, but lower-ish than the first one. But don't worry again, nobody's panicking. Sounds like I'm panicking. Nobody panics because we can change them around if they are not quite working out. If you haven't got the height order correct or anything like that. So again I'm leaving a gap and then letting this one go down into the grass. So you can see here I'm kind of folding it over and letting the tail ends go down into the grass. There we go. So we've got side one of our rocks done. So we're now going to do the side that's more in shadow. Now the shadow's not solid black. The shadow's mostly going to be this mid-brown with a little bit of solid black. So we're just going to start at the front again and work backwards. And again, I'm folding it in half, butting this between the first one and the second one. Maybe even a little bit less. I'll see you next time and uh, when you do finish it, post it in the Facebook group. Excellent. Have a good night. So yep, yeah, we're putting in the shadow. So it's a little thin, little thin shadow. So I'm taking it from not quite the top, but a little bit, tiny bit further down. I'm just pulling the shadow in and you can see already it's starting to pop out from behind. Oh, I'm going off screen. Pop out from behind. So we're going to do the same with the second rock. This time I am going to go up to the very top of the second rock and then pull that down. And then the third rock. Now don't worry about the shape of them just now. That's going to be the finessing part. So the third rock again, folding it in half. I'm putting it up. So this one's a little bit narrower at the top. So I'm starting it just a little bit lower. And then blending that down. So that wasn't that hard, was it? I mean, we've got a lot to, not a lot to do, but we've got some finessing to do. But we have some rocks that look rock-like. Excellent. Right, so let's start adding in some of the darker, darker colors and then it will really start to pop. So with the darker, the darkest black, you want to be 
less is more. I'm going to say this a lot. So much less is more. Go, th go thin to start with and then build it up. I'm going to start at this back left this time, putting in the shadow that goes out there. So it's just a little triangle. It goes from the edge of that rock to there. I'm actually going to put in a little bit more green in this area. So I'm going for the darker green. And if there's any Terry Pratchett fans out there, you'll know that green is the best colour for camouflage. I'm blending that green up. There we go. And now I'm taking just tiny, tiny bits of this. And I'm going to start working the shadows sort of around that area, this area here. So on the right hand side, so we're working on the middle one, the right hand side of the chocolate brown I'm going to put in the dark brown in a tiny, tiny, tiny thin line. So I'm almost outlining that middle rock just up there and up to the top. So a tiny, tiny amount. And if you want, you can just take some scissors and snip. But you can see that that just pops that rock. I mean, we still have to put in the highlights, but that just makes those rocks pop forward. And again, we're going to do the same to the, the front one. The darker chocolate brown, we're working on the right hand side of that. And doing a thin line. So a super thin line. If it ends up so thin that it disappears, that's okay. You can just put more on, that happens. And this thin line, we're going to actually pull it out and down, and that's going to come along to beside your hill. Not your hill, that's not a hill. What's that called? That's a lochin, or oh, that's a loch to define the edge of there. And I can see already that I want to put a little bit more dark green on the other side there. So I'm just gonna pop that in. If you don't need to do this, and you if you do this correctly, don't worry. I'm just gonna pop it in a little bit more dark green there. You might even pop a tiny bit of the darkest, there we go. So we've taken the line from there, so the right hand side of the first bit, down and then to the edge of the water. So it's sweep down in a nice wee curve there. I want to put in a little bit more of the camel on this one at the bottom because I'm losing, or do I? No, I want to take that up, there we go. That's better. So a bit more camel. <coughs> Making a mess. Bit more camel there. And just letting those ends trail down. Nice. Okay. Hope you guys are all doing wonderfully. We're going to put in a little bit more, let's go for the light, let's go do what I say and uh, sketch it all in before we finalise it. So I'm going to add, I'm now going to the white and again we want to be very, very fine with how much we're using so it's not much at all. 
and this time, so the darks we put on the right hand side of all of the rock formations, the lights we're going to put it on the left, just thin lines down the left and if it strays a little bit you can see I'm trying to point to the thing so in here you can see it does stray a little bit across where like lights are hitting rock prominences and things like that so you can let let it sort of play let the light play there we go and again this one so this one's got an interesting little bit that kind of so I'm putting on this one a little use your words uh, <laughs> I'm going down the left hand side of it and then turning it in slightly so that it makes it look like there's a standy outy bit I'm pretty sure that's not the technical term but I'm it is now it's gonna fill over all of this see where I'm going there we go I'm gonna put a little bit more white on this one because I think it, for me it stands out a little bit better so I'm still working into the camel area but I'm gonna work onto the right hand side of it there we go and then I'm gonna last but not least onto the right hand right hand man right hand man there yeah that's what i'm gonna say now and again just on the left hand side of it working the white and we have three rocks that are getting hit by the sun well done guys so pretty much all of the colors are there so now is a really good time i know there's i can definitely see bits i need to work on now is a good time to hold it in the frame. So give yourself a break for a second, look away from it, come back with mildly fresh eyes. So to work the frames, you unscrew, oh, unscrew this little bitty here. Doop, doop, doop. I would unscrew it to its fullest potential, but not too much that it falls apart. And if it does fall apart, just pop it back in and screw it again. I do this on a hard surface because it's, it's uh, from experience not worth it doing it on the mat and then just lay that on top so I feel where the edge is and put the edge of my picture on the edge and then you're just popping it on and you can shift shift it around if you want to see where it is but I'm pretty happy with that. I'm liking the composition, I'm enjoying the sizes. I definitely want to squinty up slightly because I want my squinty horizon. But yeah, I'm happy with the layout. I'm happy with how the colours are showing. So it's now time to just fiddle for a while. And fill in little bits, put in texture and detail and we've got one one very important thing that I have forgotten, not forgotten, but left for last, is from this wee lock-in, there is a wee path that goes up. And this path really helps to build depth and scale because it is such a narrow path and it shows you how big the, the rocks are. But that I want to do pretty much at the very end. So to start with now, I'm just gonna go over it all and give it a good bit of felting. I'm going to hold three needles at the same time. Give it a good felt all over. Just let it settle in. And while I'm doing this, um, let's talk about needle marks. So I actually don't mind the needle marks. I love the needle marks. But if there are a couple of things, if you want to smooth it out you can do so you've seen me whenever I 
pull it up I kind of smoosh it so smooshing it helps to even out the fibers on the holes you can also so I'm adding in a bit of blue here you can also steam it so get a steam iron don't iron directly don't iron directly onto the the wool but you can steam gently a sort of a, cent a couple of centimeters above the wool and that will kind of open it out a little bit or you can just enjoy them you can also I haven't tried this yet but I intend to wet felt it so you can lightly wet felt it to sort of even it out as well there we go so I put a little bit of just the blue behind the rocks and that kind of makes them stand out quite nicely as well am I still in frame oh I'm shifted so the blue of the horizon there we go right so let's work a little bit more onto my rocks although I am currently quite happy with them I think I want this one to have a little bit more definition on its right hand side I didn't pull that black up as high as I want to white's escaping I'm going to pull this tiny amount of black just up there just to the top and you can get a little bit more excitable you can put in a little bit more dark if you want it or I like to really just take the tight you can't even see how tiny this is the tiniest bit and then lay it over the whole of the chocolate brown area so you can still see a lot of the chocolate brown so we're not getting rid of that but it's layering just a thin layer of like random strands over it that white is escaping too much I'm gonna pull that so this I've, I've got a massive gap there I'm gonna deal with that gap right now because it's annoying me so I'm taking a little bit more of the camel brown filling in that gap I might even that's better oh that's better um <laughs> put a bit more of the light brown because I've lost a lot of my light brown in my fading and this is just a time to play with it I always say it's a really really good idea to step away step away for a, an evening Come back the next day take a photograph of it is really good so if you can photograph it and have a look at it on your camera that gives you a different idea of how it looks or hold it up hold it upside down I want to say back front but that doesn't make sense and um, just looking at it from different angles so I'm going to put a tiny bit of white actually on the top of this look at it from different angles to see what shouts out to you as needing changed or you'd like to do differently because even at this stage if we want to we can pull anything off reposition it have another go but you can also just let it be and enjoy it I'm really loving the tails coming down there so if you missed how to do that earlier when I was doing the sort of bottom sections of the camel I made sure to leave the fluffy ends coming down and that's on top of the green grass just let those tails spread out and don't be worried about if there's like green gaps coming up that's totally fine I'm actually going to put in 
I'm going to take some of the darkest green and I'm laying it so that the tail, so the fluffy tail is facing up the way. So it's like the opposite of what's happening with the camel tail, the camel tails, <laughs> the camel coloured tails going down. Okay, I might even just whoop, snip that there and use the other tail coming up there and around there. There we go. I'm going to put in a little bit, just the tiniest, yes be brave, the tiniest of the dark to go around the edge of the lochens so that it kind of Again, tiny, tiny. So I'm actually laying it down and pulling it out at the same time, if that makes any sense. This just gives an edge to the wee locks. Now, the first time I was doing this, when I was doing the practice one, I was doing it um, over Zoom with a friend and she was doing it at the same time and she put in some lovely pinks and purples in the sky and so if you do want to experiment with different colours in your sky and you have leftovers from other kits so oranges, pinks, purples, don't be afraid to chuck them in and see and if it doesn't work it doesn't matter you can take it out again So I've gone around my locks. Am I still in frame? I'm squinty. So if anybody is needing a little bit of extra hand with this, give me a shout. You can always comment afterwards because this video stays up and comment in the comments or you can pop across to the Facebook group that I have for this where everybody is super excited to help and we post photos of all the ones that we've done and ideas of what to do a little bit more white there we go Right, I'm going to work a little bit more on here because I'd like a little bit more texture. So in the bottom of these two there's a slight, almost an overhang. So I'm going to try and work that in with just, so I'm going for the, what am I calling this, the chocolate one. And just from, with the white we went at a slight angle so I'm going underneath that angle to give it a little bit of a shadow not too far just a tiny bit and that just pulls that there we go pulls that there and the same on this one I'm going to put in the tiniest tiniest bit of chocolate to give that a sort of bait I'm actually going to pull it up a little bit higher give that a base there we go so I think this needs to I'm gonna be quite pernickety now because I like I like playing with these rocks it's really fun I'm gonna pull the, the camel just to the right a little bit there we go. White, pull that white up. So this is now just playing and fiddling and seeing what works. There's no stress. And if it doesn't work, we'll just take it off. So 
something about what's missing ah it's missing the shadow at the top on this one that's what's missing so again tiniest tiniest amount I'm going to put a wee point up there that's better and again on this this one the top of it was a different shape than the other one I mean the rocks like your rocks do not have to look like my rocks look like it's your interpretation of rocks so don't worry if they're not exactly the same as long as they look like rocks I'm gonna count that as a win I'm gonna make this one a little bit higher just to give it a bit more definition so you can just add more on. That's better. So I need a little bit higher there because I felt that they were sort of merging into one. But not as high as the front one. There we go and I'm going to again so on the right hand side of each of the rocks we've got the chocolate and because I added some height with the camel I'm going to add some height with the chocolate as well so that it's definitely I like oh, I like that little bit there where it goes in and out again I mean I don't know if the rock looks like that I've lost a picture on this screen but it does now because this is my picture and I'm in charge of it. Uh, what I say goes. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I like that a little bit higher. And so we went camel, chocolate, and then just outlining it in the black. And maybe a little bit, a tiny bit of black that's not black that's other colors on the right hand side of the chocolate let's try it and see I think I did that there we go that's it so there's a tiny bit of black on the right hand side of the chocolate and the left hand side so you're essentially outlining the shadow now don't go too heavy with the black and don't be afraid I'm going to chop off bits of it that are sticking up rather than felting them down just to tidy it up a wee bit right let's Time are we at? How long have we been? Ah, we've only been in it. Like we've been an hour, and look how much we've done. Oh, you can hear when I still have straight to the table. <laughs> I'm super happy with that. I was slightly worried. Should I admit this? I was slightly worried I wouldn't get it done in an hour. I'm pretty sure it's only going to be a little bit longer and then I'm totally happy with it. I've got the wonderful rocks that are standing out. We just need to put in the path, tidy it up a wee bit. And now remember, I know you all panic at this stage, it looks better than you think it does. And I'm really proud of you. So I've pulled it off and I'm giving it a good smoosh around to see if there's any loose bits. You can see all this black here, this darker colours. But I am just going to chop off. But you can let darker colours go about it. Don't worry if there's, they're just little shadows in the rock. I want 
that to have a little bit more of a an undershadow. An undershadow? Let's call that a word. An undershadow there. So on the left hand side when I'm putting in a little bit of undershadow there. And a little bit of dark as well. Just so it pulls it There we go. So it makes it look like it's kind of hiding around the corner. Mm, a little bit more chocolate. Chocolate going down. I'm pulling some chocolate on top of the camel there. Just to make the rocks stand out further and to make it look a lot more shadowy. There we go. That makes the rock stand out quite nicely. This is the fun bit for me because it can just be one tiny thing that you change that makes all the difference. Again, I've got a wee gap. <laughs> I keep getting a gap there. I'm going to have to fill that gap in. Right, let's just fill this in once and for all with the chocolate brown and a little bit of green to make it stand out from the rocks. There we go. I feel like this is coming together nicely. And I bet all of your guys look absolutely amazing. Do I want to fiddle anymore or is it time to put in Time to put in the path, let's think. I'll do a little bit more felting and then it's path time and then I'm pretty happy with this. I am obviously going to come back Tomorrow, felt it some more because it's still not totally felted in. I would do about another half hour of sort of a little bit fiddling and just stab, stab, stabbing to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm going over it. And you'll notice that the more you go over it, the more the colours that you've built up and layered up just blend nicely into each other. And you'll notice any spots that you want to change. I think I want, how is it looking in my frame there? I need a little bit more green down at that bottom so that when I put it in the frame, it's totally filled. touches of black in the water and I mean tiny amounts just to give it the tiniest tiniest little shadows felt it in quite well so that most of it disappears but so it's just got that little bit of 
sort of waves or movement in the water. There we go. So hopefully you guys have something similar to what I have here. I cannot wait to see them. I'm super excited. If you, if you want me to go over anything, give me a shout. But I'll just do a quick rundown again of what we've done. So we've gone from the sky blue to the camel to the chocolate to the darkest green. And we've gone round fading up from the darkest green to the middle green to the lightest green. And then we did our three fingers, old man's fingers. Starting with camel on the left, the lightest of the browns, filling in the right hand side with chocolate on each one. And then just highlighting with the white and low lighting with the black. I think I want to, I'm gonna, one more, one more thing. There's a wee notch that I want to highlight it's on the other one as well, so I'm going to pop it in there just with the dark and pull that dark forward. It just gives it a bit more texture to show it's not just a smooth rock face. So that wee notch is just knocked out of there. You can do that in a couple of places as well. I'm going to put uh, one more on here, I think. Just to give it, there we go, give it some interest, give it some lights and darks. I'm going to do it again on this one. Now after this is live you can always watch it again and it, I assume you're watching it again now you know that you can just rewind bits stop bits and if you're having any trouble just go back don't I don't want to be putting, I want to be putting the dark in there okay I think it's path time now One more little fadey bit there. There we go. Okay, let's pop this path in. And a little bit. Nope, almost. I don't want it to end. I'm having too much fun. So I'm going to put... I've missed the white off the top when I added the height onto this second one. There we go. Now yeah, that's got the the highlights on that left hand side. So just bring it forward. Okay, so now we're going to put in our wee path that gives it a sense of scale and humanity almost. So the path is going to be the dark black, but it's just going to be super thin. You're going to go in. You can do this in black or you can actually in the lighter bit I'm going to do it in the chocolate and it's going to go to the black as it goes into the dark bit. So super thin, so only a few strands, you can see how few strands of hair it is. I'm actually twisting it slightly to hold it together. This path is going to go along and then it's going to curl down and it's going to go along again. So it's not a straight path and then it's going to go into the black again tiny amounts and you can fade the black up into the brown I'm just going to take that down and you can do another zig if you like zigzag and that path just shows 
some sort of tiny human scale that is these massive rocks. I'm going to felt one more time all over and then put it in its frame, I think. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this as much as I have. And I hope you've also not found it as hard as you thought it was going to be and believe in yourselves more than you did an hour ago because it is just filling in the colours and knowing a couple of tricks about light and dark. And I'm so proud of all of you. Okay, it's time to pop it in its frame. I'm super happy with how it's looking and I think I'm gonna call it a night. I am obviously, like I've said before, gonna come back tomorrow, fiddle around with a couple of the areas, but I'm not gonna change too much. I'm just gonna play. I feel like the rocks are so much thicker than the sky. So let's do this. Let's pop it in its frame. And I want it to be. I've made it. I've made it straighter than expected. I want it there. I can also. Oh, sorry if that was bad in the sound. I can also pull it down a little bit. No, I like having that locking in. That's why it's nice to do a little bit more than you think you need because then you've got wiggle room to play with shapes oh oh i like that positioning it's gonna have to go a little bit nope i'm lying to you all i'm gonna pop in a tiny bit more grass there just so it takes it right over to the edge. I'm gonna go for the light green. Going into the middle green. And there you thought you'd got rid of me. Ha ha ha. haven't mentioned this before but if you do want to not have it in the frame you can fill the whole square up have it as a framed square you've got other options I just love it in the frame and they make a great gift so you can gift it to people as well or have a whole wall of them dark and now it's time to frame it there you go all right take two nobody saw it's fine there we go that makes me happier So when you're completely happy with your design and you've spent a good amount of time, so I'm still going to go around this edge there later on, that's totally fine. But when you're completely happy with your design and you're finished, pop it into the frame and tighten it up as tight as you can go. And then all you have to do is chop off around the back, chop around this back and then it's ready to hang on your wall. So I'm just going to pretend that I've done that and hide it there. 
So let's move you out of the way and let's make a nice little finishing screen to show how proud I am of all of you guys. make it look nice and tidy like there isn't a massive mess of fluff everywhere that is my life there we go well done guys and oh if you do want to see the I haven't oh kicking the camera uh, the the previous one I haven't yet Framed. Just for comparison. Oh, make it not squinty. There we go. Well, thanks again. Have a wonderful night. And I will see you, if not before, next week. Oh, I need to do a thumbs. If not before, next week. Thank you, guys. Have fun.